Hey guys, it's Robin, R. Island Crafts, and welcome to my craft room. This is my Whip It Wednesday video where I'm going to show you what I've been working on in the craft room this week. We did the reusable makeup remover pads on last Friday's video, so I'm going to count that as actually creating something this week. I've been talking to my patrons earlier last week, or at the end of last week, I got another sinus infection. I can actually feel it coming on. So I got to, I had that doctor's appointment on Wednesday. So I got in early, got some medication, suffered for a few days because it seems like as soon as you get like the antibiotic or whatever medicine you need, the next day is always like the worst day ever because you got to wait for everything to kick in and it's still getting worse. So instead of like forcing myself to do things last week, I just took some half days and some days off. And actually I feel a lot better today. Today's Monday. I've been able to, I got out and mowed yesterday and stuff like that. So I'm feeling a lot better instead of pushing myself every day and feeling rotten for like a week and a half. I just took a few days off and I felt better faster. Amazing how that works, right? So on one of my lists from last week, I wanted to put some binding on this Quilt As You Go little table topper. We made this a few years ago. People wanted to know how to do the Quilt As You Go where you, we've done this with pouches before, where you lay the fabric down. I'll see if I can link it at the end of this video if I can find it again. You put the fabric down and then you stitch another one right down through your batting and everything like that. I did it straight through to the backing and the whole bit. Anyways, so that's done. It's going to get put into the Halloween box and with the other quilted Halloween decorations. And I'll pull that out. Maybe I'll get one of those, a little small white or black tree and put on it. And I'll have a Halloween tree. And this will be like a little, it can still be a Christmas tree skirt, even though it's squarish, right? I say squarish because it's like 12 by 14. But yep, the binding's done. Another thing on my list was to work on these little Japanese flower crumb block quilts that I've been talking about. I got this one pin basted. This one is going to be mine, the single block. And I have this purple and green. It's really, I like this. I didn't have a lot of this print. I had just enough to do two of these little mini quilts. But I thought it went really nice because, you know, it's flowers and it has the purple and this purple is light enough it can kind of have a little gray in it if you want so it kind of goes with this nicely as as far as I got is pin basting it I didn't want to start working on it when my head wasn't clear and have to mess it up and not be happy with it later because since it's for me if I quilted the whole thing and then didn't like it I know I would leave it and not take out the stitches I think I'm going to free motion on it and I'm kind of leaning towards, I gotta see if I have the purple that's in my head that I'd want to do. I want it to kind of blend in, you know, more of a lighty purple grayish color in there. And if not, then I'll probably just do it. I mean, I could pull out some greens or I'll just do it in the gray. We'll see. I'm going to use mine as a practice to see what color I like on it. So that when I go ahead and quilt this one, this one's going to be going into the shop. I want to make sure that I have, I think, yeah, because these two flowers are the ones that are up at the top. I, I'd like to see what it looks like on mine and then do it on this one so that it looks nice. Because if the purple stands out more than I'm picturing it in my head, I could do it on some scraps. Yeah, you're right. I know I could. But what fun would that be, right? Well, we're not taking any risks that way. So I got this one pin basted. I used the same fabric on the back here. I love this fabric. I can't remember. I think it might have came either someone sent it to me or it came in a box that I purchased at an auction. One of my previous neighbors had an auction house and whenever they had like random boxes of sewing and fabric or yarns or something, they'd send me a picture and ask if I'd want to bid on it. I think I got this one for just a big box. It, was, it had to have been under five bucks. I know I didn't pay very much for it, but if you recognize this fabric, if you had sent it to me, or if you know what it is, please let me know. So that's just pin basted and ready to go. We'll see what we do on that. I first thought, you know, straight line quilting. Then I thought, no, this needs to be free motion. I need to have something that I feel like it needs to flow, right? So that's put away for now. But whenever I have that moment and the inspiration, it's all set and ready to be quilted. So I will work on that. I don't think I got to anything else. I think I have to look back and see what was on my list. They like said, when I got to, I do the videos at the beginning of the week mostly. When I got towards the end of the week, I'm like, I just don't feel like doing anything. But there were some things that I did want to work on. 
I started pulling out some fabrics to make some Christmas fabric postcards. So I have various ones that are cut and other ones that I need to piece with some backgrounds and add that in. I, I just, I have this panel that has the, the rows. It's a row panel. You know, let's go build a snowman and it has things like this. I thought instead of the postcard going left and right, you know, it can go top and bottom like this. So it has a lot of fun things. And then it had, it had like these snowmen and stuff. So I just need to build it out into something a little bit larger so that it will fit onto, oh, here they are. So they had them in a certain ways. Like I could cut them. There's a third snowman over here. So like this guy was over here. So it's to let it snow and then, you know, it just repeat itself and stuff like that. So I cut them off to various places like this. So sometimes a snowman are on the right. Feed the birdies, please. And sometimes the snowmen are on the left. And I thought they were just simple, nice little Christmas. I feel like because it's on a, a muslin type color, it's just, of course, cotton fabric and stuff, but it has that old world type feel to it with the colors and stuff. So I've got those all out so that I can start making my fabric postcards. And then this weekend, we're gonna be going live on Saturday. I, what, noon I think is what I always do. And we're gonna do zipper pouches. So I wanted to get some things done ahead of time so that we're not making the components of the pouch. We're just learning how to put the zippers in. So I thought I would, went through my salvages and I pulled out a bunch of pink ones and I have black and white polka dots on this side. So I've got the pink salvages here. And then I just pieced the back. So we're going to do a basic zipper pouch. Friday's video is going to give you all the details that you need and some links. And they asked to do one that had some shape to it. I've had requests to do the zipper pouch. Now I've done this with my patrons before. But we'll go ahead and do this on the live also. So that we can do just a standard zipper pouch. And then just show you how one once you do the zipper part it's all the same and the rest of the shape of the body doesn't matter so if that's what you guys were talking about about shaped bags that's the one we're leaning towards so if you're going out shopping this week and you don't have any zippers grab some uh, zippers the tip i'm going to give you right now and you'll get plenty of details in friday's video is whatever size pouch you want to make you want to get your zipper so it's a couple inches longer as you can see mine are much longer here but it just makes it so much easier to put in the zipper the first few times you do it and then afterwards if you want to do the metal zippers or have you know the zipper that's the same length and all that you can go ahead and do that now there's loads of ways to make pouches but we're going to do the simple one that i usually make no tabs on it or anything like that these aren't uh the zippers on a roll they're not the the open wide ones where it's the continuous zipper where there's no you know where it comes apart here with the little metal thing like that so i'm just using your basic craft zippers they're the nylon ones and that's what we're going to work on on saturday's video did a little knitting. I finished this one. It still needs to be blocked. This one is definitely not as neat as the last one that came off the needles. So block that out and it's going to look really nice. It'll be semi-square-ish and it'll be perfectly fine. So I cast it on a new dishcloth with some new yarn. This one is called Sugar and Cream, the original. This is Coral Seas Ombre some fun colors in there. I don't know if you guys notice it or not. You see the shadows and everything. I actually found a ring light that was on a really good sale at Walmart. It has great reviews. It was marked down on clearance, so chances are they've either come out with a new model or they only have a few of the one that I purchased. They have ring lights. They have Walmart has this little Black Friday sale that's not just on Black Friday. They have different things every week or something like that. I don't really need a lot of things, so I don't really look at them because window shopping at home is not the same as going to like the mall and window shopping, you know? You're just scrolling through on the internet. I, I don't I don't have the patience for that. I don't have the interest for it. But I did know that I wanted a ring light for doing my videos. So I'm hoping that that should be coming in in a few days, test it out to see if it works check it out during the live. We'll see. And hopefully we can avoid some of these lighting issues now that the sun has moved as we're falling into autumn here and getting close to winter. The sun's in a different spot, so now I'm all shadowy. Patty, 
Anywho, more information than you wanted, right? I worked on my pumpkins, so we know I finished my neon guys, right? And these are the bird braid, bird brain designs. Trick or treat pumpkins, number 634. I did the next ones. So this is the first one I did. The second one is the four patch. And I wanted to do that in the same volcanic neon green batik here, but I went with the black. So there you go. You can see these guys. I've got them all done. There's this little four petaled flower type thing. So I left that out. I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet with this. And then I was thinking these lines here, maybe I'm going to do some quilting in it. So when I go ahead and set this up on some batting and stuff before I put the backing on, or even if the backing is on, maybe I'll do those really big stitches with the embroidery floss and do the frame around it like that so that these stitches here become the quilting. These guys, I tell you right now, I know 100% they're going to get set down and they're going to get forgotten for a while until later next year. Mostly because, you know, Halloween has passed. I can still use these, of course, for the fall, Thanksgiving, and stuff like that. So depending on the mood I'm in and how I feel, I might just go ahead and pull them out. But when it comes to actual embroidery, I'm going to pull Santa back out and put him out in the living room. So on those nights when I want to put a few stitches in somewhere, I'll do Santa and get him going. He's definitely not going to get done this year. He won't be finished embroidered, let alone turn into something. I need to find where I tucked away the snowman for safekeeping. Ah, safekeeping. Who knows where he could be? I have an idea. And get him so that I can turn him into a wall hanging. As I said, since I wasn't feeling well and I didn't want to push myself, I did some puttering. I picked up a couple more containers at the Dollar Tree. These are square versus the rectangle ones. The last ones I bought were white and rectangle this way and not as tall. And these are square and taller. I went and put some of my salvages in here. So when I was digging through to find the pink, I started separating them out. I need to find some smaller bins for the different ones. I want to separate them so like all the solid colors are in one. All the ones that only have the salvage with like the, the circles and stuff on it with the colored circles. I want to put that in a separate one. I want to separate my really long ones from my short ones just so that I can actually start using these salvages as projects, right? So for now, I have them clothes pinned in little Ziploc bags. So I've got my Halloween salvages. I've got some food. I have autumn. I've got my Christmas and my winter. I had them just sitting in there, but as I was digging through the salvages and putting them in there, the bags flipped to the bottom. So, you know, you can't find them easily. So I thought, well, you know what? It's just sitting on the table right now. Let me go ahead and put these in until I find they didn't have the containers I wanted at the store. I was thinking little containers like this would be good to separate them in. They don't need to be really big and stuff like this. This one's good to have in the craft room when I cut the salvages off and I just throw them in the bin. And then I can go ahead and sort through. Like, see, these are solid, so I'd like to put them in a separate container. And these are cut off of my extra wide backing, so they are super long. So I want to have those there. Maybe I want to have... I have seen a lot of flower salvages so maybe i want to separate out the flowers too so i thought i'd get a few of these and they stack really well together so when this bin gets full and i'm having one of those days where i want to touch fabric but not do anything or i just have 10 minutes to do something before i get into videos or finish the day i can lay all these out and then just go through here and like playing decks of cards you know you just go ahead and deal them out and separate them There's always little things that I need to do behind the scenes to prepare myself for things. Like, because I make so many fabric postcards, I like to cut all the batting. I like to cut all the backing. I like to have all my labels already, and I have my little clear envelopes and one of these types of things. So everything's all laid out. So when I say, oh, I've got 10 minutes to make fabric postcards, let's see what I can do. And that's what I did. I made three fabric, three, I made Oh, you know, that's hard for me to do. I can never do that. So I made three fabric postcards this week. And as I'm chatting, I'm going to see if I can pop up a picture here and there of each of them. Two of them look very similar, yet they're different. Here's the first one. So that way when I go and I'm like, oh, 
I've got like 10 minutes. I want to get this out before the mailman comes. Let me whip this up for a friend as a thank you, as a I'm thinking of you type thing. So I go ahead and do that, right? So I have all, I cut my backings out. I think I was down to about, actually see the different colors by the way they're flip flop. This is all I had. And I know I need to make at least 50 Christmas ones. This is not going to cut it. So I went through and I cut up a bunch of my backings. So I have those already. I will probably need to go through and cut more batting square rectangles because I can see from here that my stack, I have two stacks about this tall, so I'll probably wipe them out when I do the Christmas ones. So that way, like I said, it's just pull it out a couple minutes and go. If I had to cut my batting and cut my backing, get all my scraps and sew them on, even if I just used the pieces of solid fabric like you'll see in this one, or like I'm doing with the Christmas ones, it still takes time. So I have all those Christmas ones cut. I'm ready to go there. I have all the pieces. And then here's another one that looked like the first one, but different. Then I thought, I noticed since I was going through all of my little shelves over there where everything's so neatly organized, except for a couple of notebooks, cause you know, there's always notebooks in a craft room for me at least. I look, okay, well, some of these things are getting low. I made a whole bunch of those fabric scrappy cards, like the note cards and stuff. So I thought, well, I better cut some more stuff. So I cut out a bunch for envelopes. I just keep them in these Ziploc bags separated, and then I keep them in a bin together. I cut out a bunch of the little linings for the envelopes. Then this is where you sew the scraps onto. So then when I have the scraps from these, because they're not all the right sizes when you cut them out of the scrapbook paper and stuff like that, I always have these little pieces left over that I've saved them in this envelope that I call for thank you notes. And what I was thinking, I'd, I want to do some type of like a watercolor. I purchased some watercolor. I just tried it at the Dollar Tree just to see how it is. And of course, it's just cheap kid stuff and it doesn't work very well. So I need to go to Michael's and see what they have. Worst comes to worst, I'll just get some regular paint, add a little water to it in my little palette and water it down. I thought I'd do a little watercoloring on it and then I need to find a thank you stamp. I'd like to find a nice cursive one that says thank you that I can stamp on top of the watercolor. And then I'll have the back blank. It's just not folded or anything. It's just a one piece of cardstock, you know, double-sided there. And then if I want to write a personal note, like, hey, Robin, thanks for ordering from my shop. I hope you enjoy the bandana. Whatever, you know, I don't sell bandanas, so I don't know why I thought of that, but whatever. I think that's just nice to have that little personal note tucked in so I can have all the thank you cards ready. And when you guys purchase something, I can just add a little tucked in note. So that's, I didn't throw away any of my scraps. I saved those. And I also cut out a bunch of cards. I just haven't folded them. I did not feel like my brain was coherent enough to make sure everything was lined up neatly and to fold it all, right? You know how that goes sometimes. And then besides that, I, like I said, I picked up a few extra of those plastic containers. So I had my black, white, and gray scrap fabrics all in one container. I went through and separated them. So I have blacks in one. I have whites with just all white, white on white, or maybe some little black printing on it, and then all my grays. So I got this stuck in my head that I want to make gray zipper pouches or gray tote bags, and I could just go to that gray bin and not have to dig through the whites and the blacks. So I separated them out, got a little separated out my holiday scraps, you know, Christmas, and I did, I did Christmas and winter, and I did Halloween and autumn. So I don't have to have four containers. I can just have two of the deeper ones and mix them together. Because generally, if you're crafting for Halloween, you aren't going to care if you have, like I consider it a scarecrow more of an autumn, but yet it can still be used in Halloween stuff. You know, for me, it just works. I only have so many shelves, so I can only hold too many bins, right? So I found these little down days like that. It just gives me that time to spend a few minutes. Instead of watching YouTube all the time, I can watch YouTube in the background and then have the opportunity to play with some of the scraps. And what I'm doing here is while playing with some of those scraps, I came across these blocks. Someone had sent them to me. They were in, they were in some box of scraps or something, right? 
I thought, well, you know what? These are really fun. I like these. These are like the quarter log cabins. As far as I can tell, it wasn't made. It could have been made as a full log cabin and did like the disappearing nine patch where you do the square and a square and square. But if you sent these to me, I'm sorry if I don't know exactly who did. I can't quite remember which package they were in. But did you sew these all as a one block and cut it? Or did you just make quarter square, quarter lock cabin type things? But I found these and I thought, well, you know, they're Christmas wintry colors, right? Now I know I have some of these scraps that came in the container. That's really fun with the snowman. It's once again, it's on like a muslin colored fabric. So it's feeling very retro. This looks like like the frosty snowman from the cartoon. And so I have this and I already have this fabric. I have lots of this fabric and scrap bits and stuff like that. I don't think I have the red and I know I don't have any of these scraps because I really like that. You don't normally see snowflakes on black. So I know I don't have those. And if I have this, it's very small amounts, but anyway, I'm like, okay, so I can just sew this together and make make a hot pad, make a large mug rug. I, if I put the two of them together, it really doesn't do anything right. I think you'd need like a four patch. And I don't think this one thing here makes like a mini quilt. Even if I border it with some type of fabric, I don't think it's going to make like a an interesting wall hanging or something. I thought about putting them on point. Now, I know my son Robbie loves extra large uh, pot holders like this instead of a hot pad. Well, he loves hot pads because they're really thick and, and sturdy and you don't feel the heat through it. So he tends to use a hot pad as a pot holder. But I really don't want to give my kids anything white, you know? I really love this one with the red. I, you know, this one, it's great, right? But I love the way this red pops out. See that red there? See, so I haven't figured out what to do with them. I'm thinking, you know, maybe just make them into a hot pad. Uh, I like the I like the thought of a, an oversized mug rug. I really like this one, and I, I've mixed them up to where, like this. But I didn't really care for. I mean, okay, it, it mixes everything and blends it up, so there's not like this giant. Let's see, what else can we do? But I really, while this is fun, and I think this would be a fun idea to do with other colors, I just like to have those reds together. So I'm sure I'll just go ahead and put these sew them all together into a square and quilt them up. Maybe, I don't know, I don't, don't think of anything I want. I want to practice and learn how to do feathers out of free motion quilt feathers but i think i'm going to have to draw them on my fabric i will first have to do the practice where you you know freehanded on paper and stuff like that to get the muscle memory but i really want to do feathers but feathers is not first of all this is not the right size to do feathers and i don't think it's going to work for that i'll probably just free motion it up really quick with some white thread and call it a day and get those finished up so these are on my list on my list for next week and beyond that, I have not made any decisions on what I want to do next week. I have to get through what I didn't finish this week first, right? So that's it for this week. I hope you guys join me on the live on Saturday. If you can't be there and you have any types of questions you want to know about sewing in zippers, when I put up Friday's video, please go ahead and put your questions in there. I'll do my best to write them down and try to get them in as we're doing the live. So if we hit a certain spot where you're like, Robin, how do you put this in? I can say, oh, hold on, let me show you. This is what someone wanted to see. You know, even if I don't say like, if I don't say, hey, Robin wanted to see this, I'll just make sure I'm conscious of showing that part slowly. I have it set up, as you saw, for two zipper pouches. I have a feeling I'll probably cut out more and get them ready before Saturday so that if after I sew the zipper and you want to see it again, I'll have something ready to make a second one so I can show you that part again. You know what I mean? We are going to stay live on Saturday until those pouches are done, until all the questions are answered and everyone has 
whether you feel confident going ahead and doing a zipper, at least you've got all of your questions answered and you will hold that thought and maybe save the video for later. And when you're ready to do it, you'll do it. So if you wanna go ahead and sew along with me so that if you get stuck at any certain spot, you will be right there and say, hey Robin, I'm stuck at this spot. You know, Can you backtrack and show it again? I'm more than happy to go ahead and do that. I wanna make sure everyone gets a little bit of a grasp and understand some of the parts that they don't always understand while they're doing the zippers. So if you leave those questions, so if you can't be there on Saturday, leave those questions on Friday. Even if you are gonna be there on Saturday, if you wanna make sure we hit certain spots and you don't wanna forget yourself, leave your comment, leave your questions down in the comments on Friday's video. We'll have all the supplies listed there. I will ramble on like this. You don't need to hear me twice. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say thank you guys for hanging out with me and I'll see you on Friday. Bye.